Hello and welcome back to the second episode of the V8 Supercars Fancast for 2019. My name is Kendall. I usually say that at the end, but I'm saying it at the start now. Welcome back to the... Welcome back to another episode. Melbourne, just gone. Um, the weirdest event where we have four races in one weekend because it's all support races and stuff for the F1. Um, uh, things will be a little bit different this time. This is my first time covering the Melbourne races and I've decided that I'm not going to go over each race in detail like I normally do because it's too many races. There's four races, there's too many races. So I'm not going to talk about qualifying um, because it's only 10 minutes anyway. Not that much happens. There were a few shocks. Um, Mostert qualifying in 22nd, I think, 22nd, um, for race one. And Shane had a dreadful qualifying session for pretty much all of them. Um, qualifying at the back of or outside of the top 10 in every session except one. Um, yeah. And, um... Not sure how much of that can be placed on Shane. Uh, I think for sure, um, maybe some of the sessions he uh, probably wasn't performing up to standard, um, especially since Jamie was able to qualify near the top pretty much every time. But then again, it also sounded like he was battling a lot of um, car troubles. So, I don't know. You don't really know how much to take away from that. He always managed to put a charge on in the races, except for when he didn't. So, um, I'm going to talk about the races in, in a bit more broader strokes. And one of those strokes being uh, Shane's incredibly bad luck across the weekend. Um, so, yeah, he didn't qualify great. Um, but each time he'd put on a charge, especially in the longer races, um, the 150 kilometer races, I think it is, or 120, 120 kilometers, um, he'd put on a charge. Which is good. Classic Shane charge. And then um, twice. Three times. We were robbed. We were robbed of a, of a good race with Shane in it. Because um, first race. Uh, two laps to go I think. Engine breaks down. Um, that's not something we see very much in supercars. Um, engines breaking like that. Um, breaking down like that. We don't see that very often at all. Uh, so that was... That was a surprise. We don't often see the cars just pulling up because of an engine failure. Um, but there was Shane pulling up because of an engine failure. Um, and that was race one. Race two, I think he did a ride in. And then race three, his wheel came off. <laughs> Which is... It just fell off. Um, no, no contact or anything. It just came off. And it's like... It wasn't like he just came out of the pits. He'd been in the pits. He did his pit stop. Uh, he came out, did a couple of laps, put in his best lap of the race several times in a row, and then his wheel fell off, um, which was weird. <laughs> that, that was weird. Um, and then uh, last race, he um, he went side by side with Fabian Coulthard into... Ooh, I don't remember what the turn number is, but it's the fast left-right. Um, and not really a place to overtake at, so he ended up taking the, um, he ended up cutting the second half of the S's, and it looks like he tries to redress, um, by letting Coulthard back alongside him into the next corner, and then he locks the brakes and, uh, knocks Coulthard off the track, um, and then he was given a penalty of 15 seconds, which put him back from, I think, 11th or so, because, uh, yeah, because he didn't recover very well from that either, um, all the way back to 22nd, um, so he's gonna be, very disappointed with how this weekend has gone. Um, reminds me a lot of Tasmania last year, actually, where he just had a woeful, woeful weekend. Um, yeah, he's going to be looking forward to getting out of Melbourne, which will be by now. Um, but real shame for him, um, especially since he's one of our title contenders or should be one of our title contenders. So it's a shame to see him on the back foot, especially when Scotty is doing so well already. Um, so I'm going to move on to Scott McLaughlin now. Uh, shame about Shane, but shame about Shane. Shame about Van Gisbergen. There we go. Um, but that's racing. You know, he's just going to have to bounce back from that. But Scott McLaughlin, <sighs> nearly a complete perfect run for the first two rounds. Third in qualifying first race, and then a bunch of ones. First in every qualifying session and every race, 
all the way up until the third race at Melbourne. So that was race five, where we didn't actually get any vision of this, so we didn't get to see it, which is unfortunate, but where somehow, <laughs> somehow, McLaughlin and Cameron Waters on their, uh, not even their warm-up or warm up lap, their installation lap as they're coming around to the grid, um, they're doing their weaves to get their um, tyres up to temperature, as usual. Um, and somehow, at some point, uh, they hit each other. Cameron Waters and Scott McLaughlin, who were first and second um, on the grid for that race, they ran into each other on the installation lap, just weaving. Um, so, uh, McLaughlin was not happy, and you can imagine he wouldn't be. I mean, no one would be, would they? Um, and from what it looks like, um, I would say that Waters shares most of the blame. Uh, we didn't actually get any vision of it, and um, because they don't they don't film the installation lap, because why would they? <laughs> it doesn't. Nothing happens in the installation lap. Um, so we didn't actually get to see it. From what it sounds like, it sounds like that um, Scotty was weaving back and forth. wasn't necessarily looking for cars either side of him, and it sounds like he, him and Coulthard were both going quite slow, so other cars were overtaking him, because um, he wasn't at the front of the pack, it's not like Cameron was um, overtaking him for some particular reason, and it is pretty normal for cars to have their own um, uh, ways, <laughs> I suppose, of getting their tyres warmed up, techniques, there we go, programs, there we go, all the words are coming to me now, um, for getting their tyres warmed up, so it's possible that the warm-up um, program that McLaughlin was doing is just a slower one, because Coulthard was also behind him, um, so that might work out. Um, it's not very normal for cars to, to go down the grid, normally they stay in the sequence in the installation lap, um, so I don't really know what McLaughlin was doing, um, but whatever the case... Um, he had been overtaken by a couple of people already. Um, so it's not like people hadn't been able to get past him. It's not like he was taking up all the road swerving. And um, Waters comes up beside him to do the same thing. He's going to go past him. And um, and uh, Scotty runs into him, as far as I can discern. Um, so it was Cameron's front left and Scotty's... Maybe it's his front right versus his Scotty's rear left, um, but it was it was front to rear contact, um, which completely shattered um, the car. Uh, I think it I think it broke the suspension on both cars, so neither of them started. Um, and I suppose that's more Cameron Waters' fault because there's no reason to create an overlap if someone's going faster. Like, if someone's ahead of you in the installation lap, there's no reason to create an overlap and get into that. Pro but then again, Scotty should really be looking out where he's going if he knows he's going slow. Um, I don't know. I'm really split on this one. Um, whatever the case... Um, they were both out of the race. So neither of them started. And um, they shook hands, as far as I know. I don't know who apologized to who or anything like that. But I know they shook hands and have made up, um, which is good. Um, McLaughlin's a pretty relaxed guy. So I didn't think there'd be any lasting beef over that. Um, and... Yeah, it's good to see two drivers respect each other enough to... Um, shake hands on it afterwards. Um, but, my word, what a strange incident. I don't think I've ever seen an accident in the installation lap before. Um, that's weird. That's weird. And what a, what a start to the championship for Cameron. Um, just unable to, he's had some solid positions, but he's just had some weird DNFs as well. That have really ruined his chances this early on. Uh, so was Mostert, actually. Um, but yeah, really weird incident. Really weird incident. Never seen anything like that before. Um, so, that was odd. Um, 
but you know they're supposed to be all chummy again now um so we'll talk about we'll talk about Mostert now actually because um he had a great weekend really his car was fast it was really fast um so on race one like I mentioned he qualified very poorly in 22nd and he managed to finish in fifth so he made up 17 positions um to get to fifth on the grid um we'll finish fifth and that's insane in how short of a race that is it's only 15 minutes long um that's mental how fast he he managed to to plow through the field and he was fast if he'd been on the front row i think he would have been able to take the win quite easily if he'd started near the front um which he did do on race five of course mclaughlin wasn't there um to contest um and neither was uh waters um, so we didn't really get to see Mustard's pace versus McLaughlin's. Um, but I have a feeling that Mustard had the stronger car. Um, and his championship hopes are really alive now. Um, he's third in the championship and he's not very far behind um, after that points haul that he got. Um, which is great for him. Um, and we could potentially be on to see, on to see quite... Quite the championship fight. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it, but we've got quite a few different teams and drivers up the pointy end uh, on regularly. You know, um, all we need now is for McLaughlin to be slightly less perfect <laughs> and not win every single race, and then we'll actually have an interesting championship. Because my main worry this year is that so far, McLaughlin has won every single race that he's started, um, and he's come first in every single qualifying session except for one <laughs> which is a crazy stat i know there's only been well, there's only been only six races um and he's won all of them except for one which is crazy he's got a perfect flat score of 500 at the moment um so i do hope that um either the tickford boys pull something up because their car their mustang looks strong in general at the moment um or red bull really gets their act together because that car is not great. Um, I think Wing Cup's definitely out driving it at the moment. Um, considering where he's been able to finish. Because every time he starts well, he falls back and he has to fight to stay where he is. Um, so that Red Bull car's not great this year. And the Mustangs definitely have the upper hand. Um, so hopefully we get to see some kind of title battle between, fingers crossed, McLaughlin and Coulthard. I'd like Coulthard to be in there. And Mostert and Waters and Will Davison. Wouldn't that be great again to see Will Davison up there? I don't really see Lee Holdsworth making a comeback now. Considering how far down he is. <laughs> um, I'll talk about him in a minute. Got some news about Lee Holdsworth and Richie Stanaway. Um, but, yeah, my hope is that we get a title fight. An interesting title fight. Um, between, well, all the Mustangs, really. Uh, because they seem to be strongest right now. And hopefully the Red Bulls as well. The Holdens definitely seem to be quite slow comparatively. Um, so we'll see how they bounce back. But I will briefly go over the results for each race. Uh, just the top 10 though. Because who cares about people not in the top 10. Um, actually no, I'll do the whole thing. Oh, nah. Mm. Yeah. Mm, ah, mm. Ah, keep humming and ahhing. I'm ignoring. I'll just do the top 10. So, top 10 for race 3, which is the first race of Melbourne, is Scott McLaughlin, Fabian Coulter, Cameron Waters, Will Davison, Chaz Moster, Tim Slay, James Courtney, Jimmy Winkup, Lee Holdsworth, and David Reynolds, with the Erebus boys really not doing too well um, so far this year. Um, I don't know if the... I don't think they were running Twin Springs when they got banned, so that shouldn't be affecting them too much. Um... Maybe it's just a case of the extra competition has caused some problems for them. Maybe it's filled some gaps that they were closed some gaps up that they were already that they were filling last year. Um, but Anton in the other Erebus car uh, finished in eleventh, right behind David, and he's doing really well actually this year. He's he's been quite solid. Um, and um, yeah, there's no real shockers in there. Will Davison's in fourth again. He enjoys being there. Cameron Waters in third again. Um, Fabian Coulthard with, I think, his best finish of the season so far. Uh, in second. 
And Tim Slade, just sort of quietly doing well every race. Um, he's definitely one to watch this year if BJR can give him a slightly better car because he's he did really well at Melbourne. Uh, as for race four, uh, the familiar side of Scott McLaughlin <laughs> in first. Chaz Mostert, Cameron Waters, Jamie Winkup, Fabian Coulthard, Will Davison, David Reynolds, Tim Slade, James Courtney, and Shane Van Gisbergen in 10th place. That was his best race of the weekend. Um, yeah, not not so great. Um, yeah, Chaz started in second and finished in second behind Scotty, and I did just say that we didn't get a chance to see their cars compared to each other, but Chaz also got a really bad start and ended up behind Wing Cup, I think, and he had to fight his way back through there. And by the time he did that, Scotty was just kind of up the road and already gone, um, which was a shame. I did want to see a battle, especially since that's the shorter race. That's a sprint race with no pit stops, less than half an hour, that one. Um, so there wasn't any way he was going to be able to catch up and put a real fight on him. Um, Will Davison and Tim Slade again scoring consistent points. Keep an eye out for both of them because they're just they're just Mister Consistency. Both of them they've just kept their noses clean, um, and they've just been scoring points every week, every weekend, which is great, great to see from them. Um, as is Mark Winterbottom, he's been doing a ride as well. He's just hovering outside the top ten in tenth there, um, so. I think uh, not one to keep an eye on, but I think that Team 18 cars, maybe if they develop a little bit more, could be a bit more of a competitor for sure. Uh, race 5, Chaz Mostert wins, followed by Jamie Winkup, Tim Slade in third. First podium of the season. First podium in a long time for BJR. I don't think they got one last year, so good on them. Uh, David Reynolds, Fabian Coulthard again in fifth. Scott Pye, James Courtney, Nick Perkat, Andre Heimgartner in the top 10. Good on him. Up eight spots. And Will Davison in 10th. Um... Yeah, once again, um, consistent scorers are up there. Tim Slade, uh, Will Davison, they're in there. Um, Jamie Winkup really outdriving that car. He really <laughs> it helped that Tim Slade was behind him because he just sort of held up the rest of the pack for a bit. Um, but Mostert was gone. And Coulthard again in fifth. He really should be doing better considering the inherent pace that those, those Mustangs seem to have and the fact that his teammate is so dominant right now. Um, they really should be getting like one-twos. You know, if Coulthard's not as good a driver as McLaughlin, that's fine. But uh, if I was DJR, I would be expecting a second place from Coulthard when, whenever McLaughlin finishes first. You know, like, especially if Fabian's qualifying in fourth or fifth, he should be able to push his way up to the front. Um, or at least a podium. Like, I don't think Coulthard's even had that many podiums this year, you know, aside from that first race at Melbourne. Um... I've been critical of of um, Coulthard before, especially last year. Um, I think he needs to get his act together. I'm not sure when his contract's up, but if he doesn't prove that he belongs in a top team by the end of this year, I get. I do think that he'll probably be on the way out very soon. Because I mean, they had a great car last year. They deserved to win the. Um, the, the uh, team championship. They really did. They had a better car than Red Bull for most of the year. Um, and it was just those consistent points from Jamie and, and Shane that made the difference for them. Uh, yeah, so Coulthard, he needs to do better. He really does. Um, yeah, you know. I mean, last year, Scott Pye got more points than Coulthard did. <laughs> and, and he's in a, definitely was in a worse car than Coulthard, you know? Um, it's just, yeah. It's just a bit disappointing. Um, Nick Perka in the top 10, he had a pretty terrible weekend as well. He kept getting pushed off the track uh, by his teammate in this race as well. So that was a bit of a controversial move. Um, but he did manage to finish in the top 10. Uh, Perkat's good. I think um, his positions that he's been getting in these in these uh, four races at Melbourne doesn't really reflect how good he was driving because he did get involved in some scraps that weren't his fault and then got pushed off the track and he just became a victim, really. Um, great result from Heimgartner finishing the top 10, though, because those Nissans don't look good this year at all. Um, they looked okay last year, but this year they really don't look very good <laughs> whatsoever. Um, so... That was race five, the 
third race of Melbourne. I hate the way that they order, they number races in this. They go by total races, but it's okay. Race six and final race at Melbourne. Um, which only completed 11 laps because of a safety car from Macaulay Jones after he got spun into the wall by Gary Jacobson, which he didn't get a penalty for, actually, now that I'm looking at it, which he really should have. Um, because he just straight out spun him into the wall. Um, so if you didn't see it, um, Jones is going for an overtake on Simona, uh, at the one of the last right-handers on the circuit, towards the back end of the circuit in Sector 3. And he went for the overtake. Simona pulled right to defend. Uh, Jones went further right to go around around her. And Jacobson is trying to go around Jones as well. Um, but there's a little bit of overlap. And he hits the back of him and spins him into the wall. Um, you know, I don't... It's hard, isn't it? It's hard to dish out penalties. Um... I think that deserves a penalty. It really does because, you know, ruined his race, broke his car, and uh, it's just not having, it's just not having presence of mind to see, like, you know, he had a very tiny overlap, so it's just not having, um, it's just not having that, that spatial awareness of how big your car is, really, um, which you really should have. Um, doesn't have to be a huge penalty, but um, I think, you know, when the result is that severe um, and... You really could have avoided it. You know, all you had to do was back out a tiny bit, just come off the throttle for half a second, not even half a second, just a tiny bit, and uh, you would have been fine. So that's the way things are, though, sometimes. Um, so, yeah, the results, which I didn't actually read out yet. Uh, Scotty, again. Chaz Mostert, again. Uh, Jamie Winkup, Cameron Waters, Will Davison, Mark Winterbottom, Tim Slade, David Reynolds, Lee Holdsworth, and Nick Perkat rounding out the top 10. Lee Holdsworth with, I think, his first top 10 finish, which is a bit <laughs> a bit shocking considering how strong those Mustangs have been. Um, I've been critical of Lee Holdsworth as well before when he was a Team 18. Um, it's kind of hard to say how... It's kind of hard to compare how good he was or bad he was in that, in that car last year. Um, just because there's only one car there. He has no teammate. We had no teammate at the time, so you can't compare him to someone in a similar car. Uh, ditto for Mark Winterbottom. Like, maybe that car's really good this year, and maybe last year it was really bad. You know? You never know. Maybe it's almost the exact same car, and Lee Holdsworth was really bad at driving, and Mark Winterbottom's really good. <laughs> you don't really know. And you can't really judge, because we don't have enough information. Um, but, now that Holdsworth is in a team with three other teammates, we can judge a little bit more, and he's been last of all of his teammates every race. Um, by quite a margin. So, you know, um, I think that sort of says everything for now. Um, he needs to pick up his game. He really does, because he was put on to replace Mark Winterbottom, which is quite big shoes to fill. Um, and, yeah, he really does need to pick it up. Um, in the next few rounds, he needs to be up there with the other Tickford drivers, you know, like, he, you know, even if he's still last, like, I get that he's got to, he's got to get used to the new, well, he doesn't know, I was going to say he needs to get used to the new car, but they're all new cars for, the Mustangs are all new for everybody, so he's not the only one who's got to get used to it, um, yeah, I, I don't have an excuse for him, um, he needs to do better, he really does, because he's four positions down from Will Davison, who finished in fifth, and he was the third uh, Tickford car um, and you know the Mustang is capable of winning because it has exclusively won <laughs> this year so far it's only been we've only had two race winners and they're both Mustangs um, and he he's finishing in the top 15 you know if that every race like he needs to do better than that and I know he had some bad luck actually he didn't have bad luck it was just silly mistakes at Adelaide but um, I know he gets maybe he gets kind of stuck up in the midfield, but he really should be he should be qualifying better. You know, like those Mustangs have been qualifying in the top ten almost every race. Um, yeah, they should be doing better. So, um, good drive for Mark Winterbottom and Tim Slade. More points for Tim Slade. Good on him. Um, I think in terms of championship, we we'll go to the championship points. I'll read these all out. Um, not that it means a whole lot at this stage. 
um, because it's so early in the season. But in first place with 500 points even is Scott McLaughlin, followed by Jimmy Winkup, who is 31 points behind, and Chaz Mostert, who is 63 points behind, Will Davison, who is 87 points behind, and Tim Slade, who is 110 points back. This is followed by Fabian Coulthard in six, David Reynolds, Nick Perkat, Cameron Waters, Mark Winterbottom in the top 10 ahead of Shane Van Gisbergen after a horrible weekend for him. Um, James Courtney, he's had some solid results. I'm actually surprised to see him further down than that. Um, Lee Holdsworth in 13th. So for comparison's sake, uh, the next Mustang is Cameron. Cameron Waters, and Waters has retired twice, <laughs> and he's in ninth. Um, so he didn't, yeah, he didn't start race five, and he didn't finish. Um, I don't think he didn't finish um, the first Adelaide race. Um, so, you know, again, should be he should be beating Waters. He just mathematically, you know, um, Heimgardner in fourteenth, the first of the Nissans. Um, like I said. Nissan not looking great this year. Really isn't. Um, which is a shame. Uh, it's their last year, potentially. Um, I'd like to see them more, but they've just never been that good, you know? It's been a shame. It really has. Um, and I just can't believe that Caruso was pushed out for, um, for, you know... I mean, why was he pushed out? He was clearly one of the better ones there. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, Anton in 15th. Todd Hazelwood in 16th, that's a much better, much better position than uh, he was in last year, which was dead set last. Um, 16th is way better. That's like six points up from where he was before. So good on him. You must be happy with that. Uh, Simona in 17th is actually the second of the Nissans. That's not something we are used to seeing very often. Um, so good on her, I suppose. Um, Rick Kelly's quite far down, which is a surprise. Um, but... That's the way it goes. It's still early in the season. We'll see how things pan out. Uh, James Golding in 18th. He's been keeping his head down mostly. Um, but that Gary Rogers car does not look good at all. Uh, Scott Pine, 19th. He's had some awful races. Uh, not really his fault either. Um, but yeah, unfortunate for him. Rick Kelly, ditto. Um, the only major incident I could think of is that thing in Adelaide with um, Chaz Mostert. Um... Yeah, that was unfortunate and wasn't really his fault, um, but you should be, I mean, you should be a bit up a bit further. He's the co-owner of that team, you know. He's being outdriven by two of his teammates. Not a great look, um, but, you know, retirement's been a lot when you're down the bottom of the field, so that's all really. Jack LeBrock in 21st, that Techno car looks awful this year. It really does. He's been the back of the grid like every race. I'm amazed he's in 21st, actually. Um, so yeah, that car has not looked great. Uh, Gary Jacobson, he has not got off to a good start. Um, I know that car's not great, the Nissan, um, but I'm <laughs> a little shocked that they replaced Caruso, who was very clearly out driving that car week to week last year, and they put in Jacobson, and here he is at the back of the field every race, you know? Um, but he is ahead of Richie Stanaway, who's in 23rd now. <laughs> Last year, last year, I was defending Stan Oe, uh, because that Tickford car was so bad that he was in that I didn't think we'd be able to get a true reflection of how good he was. And I've been kind of right. He's basically been week to week um, right up next to Golding every week, you know? Um, we don't have a huge gauge on how good Golding is because his car's not great either. Um, but towards the end of last year, he was able to outdrive Tander which is an achievement, you know, Tanner's a, a champion, um, and he was out driving him towards the end of the season, um, and Stanaway has been, on, in qualifying, he's been right on top of Golding, in the race he's been right on top of Golding, I think the reason why he's so far back in the championship right now, is because of that disqualification from race, I think it's four, let me check, nope, race five, yes, he was disqualified from race five, and given a grid penalty for the start of race six, um, because he supposedly in, in race five at Melbourne, so race three at Melbourne, confusing, um, supposedly he had a collision with Holdsworth at some point, um, which 
was deemed dangerous. He was given a $10,000 fine um, and disqualified from the race. Now, getting disqualified from a race is a severe punishment. That's something you only say for proper dangerous driving. Um, so the stewards clearly agreed that what he did was very unsafe. Um, unfortunately, there's no footage of it actually happening. So we've only got descriptions. Um, let see if I can throw up a quote from Holdsworth because he was mad. You don't often see them outright insulting other drivers, but uh, Holdsworth called Stanaway an imbecile. <laughs> so... Uh, so, Lee Holdsworth said, uh, Richie has done it again. I don't know if he's getting back at me or the team. I don't know, but obviously he's just an imbecile, an absolute imbecile. He tries to drive me into the fence every time he gets to me, and I like a bit of fair racing, a bit of rubbing and touching, but it's just ridiculous. The guy's going to freaking hurt someone. He's got rocks in his head. <laughs> um, so, not very, not exactly glowing praise from Holdsworth. Um, as for the actual incident, he, he goes on to describe it as a... Uh, I got him through turn three, which is the right-hander at the end of the straight. Um, and he belted me through four, obviously just rolled off the brake to get me in the same into five. Um, it's a quick corner. He nearly put me in the wall there again. It screwed me. I lost four or five positions from it or more. We dropped back to P20. Um, so... The thing is... Well, okay. So turn three is a right-hander. Turn four is a left-hander. And turn five is a right-hander again. And turns four and five are quite fast turns. Um, so, he belted him through four by rolling off the brake and did the same in five. So, it, presumably, he's on the inside at four. Because otherwise, how else would you hit him? That's, I mean, how else would you roll off the brake to hit someone if you're on the outside? You're just going to go wide, aren't you? And then he did the same into five, which is an opposite turn. And it's not very far up the road. Um, it's mostly just a complete switchback. Maybe he just means he turned into him in five. I don't know. But it says he nearly put him into the wall. Um, <laughs> I don't really quite understand from his description what he's, what he's saying. Um, I believe him. You know, it happened. Something happened. Um, um, and Stanaway said that uh, Holdsworth had ruined his race on the opening lap with a passing move from the Mustang driver, bending his steering. So he dive bombed me from about three or four car lengths back on the first lap and ran me off the track at 13 and bent my steering, explains Stanaway, who finished 17th. Um... Don't ask me which corner 13 is. I think it's the right-hander at the end of the S's uh, to, in Sector 3. So my race is pretty much ruined before we even finish the first lap. He could have waited another corner or two. He obviously got a fast car at the moment, so no need to be ruining someone else's race on the first lap. Then when I got near him later on in the race, obviously wasn't too kind to him. But if he wants to race clean, then that stuff won't happen. He's obviously very frustrated, but we just need to look at the footage and see what happened. Um, so Stanaway seems a bit... Too bad. Attitude. Um, it's hard to judge because it, there's no vision of it. I don't actually know what's happened. Um, so, I wish I could see something on it because <laughs> it would be nice to have some clarification of what's going on. Um, if Stanaway has just straight up retaliated to Holdsworth by hitting his car, that's not that's not on. You know, that's not how you treat these cars. Um you don't just run into people because you're upset. Um, you just, you know, I know that tensions are high and all that stuff, but if you start running into people, you just get silly penalties like this one. Okay, so like, what did he accomplish? He got disqualified, you know? Um, he doesn't sound like he's denying that he did it on purpose. Um, it says he obviously wasn't too kind to him, so maybe he just, maybe not on purpose, but just wasn't, uh, racing as fairly as he could have. Um, but regardless, you know, it's silly. It's silly. You're letting you, your emotions get the better of you, and you can't do that. Um, and now, he, look, look at him. He's way further behind his teammate, which looks bad on him. He's only in the sport because Gary Rogers threw him a lifeline. He really needs to be treating it better. Um, 
He needs to keep his head down and just get points, get results, and not cause a fuss. Um, and this is not the way to do that. So regardless of whether or not Oldsworth is in the right to be angry, uh, the stewards agree with him, so maybe he's in the right to be angry. Regardless of whether or not he has the right to be angry, um, Sanaway needs to do better anyway. You know, These are the sorts of things that get you kicked out of a motorsport. Not kicked out of a motorsport, but this is the sort of things that wind up with you not having a drive for the next year. You know, nobody nobody wants to look at that and see, oh, you know, he's going to ruin our car if he gets into a scrap with someone else. He's going to purposely crash into him. We don't want to pay that sort of money all the time. You know, get lost. Like, it's a pretty simple decision, especially when he hasn't been performing. If he had the, the performance to back it up, it wouldn't be a problem, but he doesn't. Um, so, I still think Stanaway has talent in him. Um, I still think he has a lot to show. Um... I think he needs to keep his head down and focus on trying to pull that talent out rather than making stupid decisions like this because this, this is dumb, you know? It's really petty, um, regardless of what happened. Uh, anyway, I'll go to the team's championship now, but you probably know who's in front. Um, Shell V-Power Racing Team, as they are officially known, or DJR Penske, as they should be known are in first of 870 points, followed by Red Bull, 106 points behind, with Monster Energy Racing. Is this just Cameron? Can't be. So just learning how they're classifying the cars right now. It is just Cameron Motors. Okay, they've decided to only... Okay, so... Cameron Motors is... That can't be right. 759 points. That's not how many points Cameron Waters got. He's got 346. Who else is in that team? <laughs> it just says Monster Energy Racing. You, you go to the profile and the only car in it and driver in it is uh, is Cameron Waters. So who else is it? <laughs> who else is in there? Is it Chaz Mostert as well? Or is it Will Davison? Might be Will Davison actually. Looking at the... Uh, Looking at the times, looking at the times, looking at the other team. Bit weird from supercars to uh, officially list only Cameron Waters in one team, but then add two teams, two cars together. A little confusing, but I'm pretty sure it's Will Davison in there as well. Uh, so Cameron Waters and Will Davison in third with Brad Jones Racing, as they're now known, instead of the weird mishmash of sponsors. Uh, in fourth, Tim Slater, Nick Perkat. Uh, Lee Holdsworth and Cameron Mo uh, Ch Cameron Chaz Moster in fifth, 166 points down. Uh, Erebus in sixth, not great for Erebus. Um, they're clear by a full 241 points, so almost 100 points for the next person. Um, but they are very solidly occupying that sixth spot because seventh is uh, Welcome Shore Andretti United with 367 points down. Um, again, more than 100 off uh, the people in front of them. Which is then followed by uh, Rick Kelly and Andre Heimgartner in 8th. Uh, Simona and Gary Jacobson in ninth, But not the last of the um, two-car teams because the last of the two-car teams is Gary Rogers for the second year in a row. Looking like they're going to be at the back. They're only 20 points down. They're only 30 points down from uh, the top Nissan team. So we'll see how that one plays out for the year. Um... And as for the one-car teams, uh, Mark Winterbottom in first, uh, followed by Matt Stone Racing, Techno, and Team Cool Drive, which is Macaulay Jones, who's had no luck this year so far. Um, so, there we go. That's the team championship. That's the drivers' championship. Um, let me know if there's anything I missed in the Melbourne races. I'm pretty sure I covered everything. I didn't want to go over the races in detail because it's just too many. I can't remember all that stuff. That's ridiculous, you know? I can't do that. Um, but next event. Let's talk about the next event. Tasmania. This is a... Circuit. <laughs> I say that like it's a bad thing. Not a bad thing. I like the Tasmania circuit. It's a bit short. Um, I wish it was longer. But it's a fun circuit because it's so flat out. And it's got that really tight, ridiculously tight corner at the end of it. Um, where we had that big pile up a couple of years ago. Um, they're trying their new three-part qualifying system for this event. 
Um, so, the event will be in three weeks from now. On the 5th of April is when it starts. So the race will be on the 6th and 7th of April. It's the Saturday and the Sunday. And the qualifying session on the Saturday is split into three parts. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. Followed by the race on the same day. With a practice session on the Sunday. With a three-part qualifying session. And then a race session on the Sunday. So few more sessions this year than last year. Um, also, additional drivers get practice this year as well. So that'll be wild cards and things like that. Uh, if they have any, they get a practice session to themselves. The 30 minutes at the start of the weekend. Um, so it all starts on the Friday of the 5th of April. Um, that'll be exciting. I always like Tasmania. It's an interesting track. It's so tiny, but it's got some uh, that hairpin, that really tight hairpin. That banked hairpin is always an interesting point on the track. Um, that's about it, really. Nothing else is that interesting about it. But that hairpin's always very interesting. It always creates a little bit of drama every year with how tight that part of the circuit is. Um, but otherwise, we generally get some good racing there. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I'll probably see you afterwards when we talk about the results for Tasmania. That'll be exciting. We'll see. We'll let the championship filter out a bit more. Um, hopefully we've got a bit of a three or four way title fight on our hands at the moment because all we need, all we need is McLaughlin to not win a couple of races <laughs> and we'll have a title fight in our hands between Winkup, Mostert, Davison and possibly Waters and McLaughlin and maybe Coulthard. That'd be great. That'd be insane if we could have that many people going for the championship at once compared to last year's two. So that would be awesome. Um... Let's find out in Tasmania three weeks from now. Put it in your calendars. I'll see you then afterwards to talk about the race, as always. Until then, my name has been Kendall of Bearded Kendall. Did I say my name right? Say like Kendall? My name's Kendall, not Kendall. It's a pun, you know. <laughs> my, name is, my name has been Kendall of Bearded Kendall. I will see you after the Taz Tire Power Tasmania Super Sprint on the 7th of April is the Sunday. See you then. Bye.